Hey there guys, I'm Zach and this is Zach's Editing and today I'm going to be showing you how you can automatically track a moving object in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So this is only possible in any of the CC versions, it doesn't work in CS6 or earlier but I do have a tutorial for that which is actually doing that manually but this can be automatically tracking in Premiere Pro however if you do have After Effects that will also work in CS6 or some versions earlier as well. So here I've already imported the base footage. What we'll actually be doing with this is dragging it onto the timeline. And what we'll be doing is tracking a face and blurring it. So we're going to find a good face and we're going to use this guy that we can see right in the middle of the screen right here. So we're going to find a pretty good place where his face isn't too blurred. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to go to Window and Effects. Now we're going to search up Mosaic. This is the effect we're going to apply. And just bring it onto the base footage. So now if we just fit this back, what we can see is we've got all these different rectangles. And currently, if we look at the Effect Controls window, we've got 10 horizontal blocks and 10 vertical blocks. So they're actually in the same ratio as the size of the video. So what we've got with the mosaic, which is the masking, we've got these three different options. And this is actually on most effects. You can actually have these options, as you can see also in the opacity, you've also got these options. But in the mosaic, we've got these three. We've got ellipse, rectangle, and the free draw bezier. So the free draw bezier is just drawing an organic shape. You can draw whatever shape you want, and then that'll be the mask for it. However, we're just going to be using an ellipse because that is what's going to work best. So I'll just delete that mask, and we'll use the ellipse. So now we can see is we've got this ellipse and we're just going to shape it to the same size as this guy's face. So now we have it on his face. Now we're going to go into the properties and we're going to bring the horizontal blocks up to about 90 and the vertical blocks up to about 90 as well. So now we can see there's more blocks in there and it's not like I think it was about one block that was only actually being masked there. So now we're just going to go into the mask properties and we're just going to bring up the feathering just a tad as well. Maybe not quite that much. That looks pretty good. And if we just select off of it, we can see that it's sort of feathered around the edges and it doesn't look as blocky. So in the mask path, what we've got is these different options. So I'm just going to bring this out a bit just so we can see it a bit easier. So I'm just going to hit this stopwatch and what that does is sets a keyframe and it also allows for if you change it any other time in the video, it'll also set a keyframe. So we've got these five options plus also this little navigator. So the first one that we want to look at is the tracking method. So we've got these three different methods which are pretty self-explanatory. We're going to choose position because we won't need it to rotate because his face doesn't rotate and we won't need it to scale because he doesn't actually get any closer or further away from the camera. So now we've set the position, what I'll teach you is about these four different controls here. So this has to do with the automatic tracking. What we've got is these two main ones that you'll mainly use. We've got track backwards and that will just automatically track backwards as far as it can in the video. And then we've also got track forwards which will do the same, just tracking forwards along the video. So then these two next controls are just tracking one frame backwards or tracking one frame forwards. So what we're going to do is first start off with tracking forwards automatically. So if I just fit this in, now we can just watch it as it does it. So we'll hit track selected mask forward. So now what we can see is we, if we look, we can see that the ellipse is actually automatically tracking his face and following it. So we can see this progress bar is going up. Now this progress bar is in regards to how long the rest of the video takes. So it won't actually take this long because we're going to stop it once he gets to about here because he's going to be blocked by the statue. So now as we can see his face is getting closer to the statue so we're going to get ready just to hit stop and we'll hit it right there because this person has actually walked in front of his face. So now if we just zoom in we're just going to sort of scroll through and find a place if we just use the left and right arrow keys find a place when he's being completely covered which is about right here. We're going to go into the opacity options we'll stop watch that then we're going to set that to 0% enter then we're going to go backwards one frame just left arrow key and we'll set that to 100%, so in front of here it'll be 100%, and then once it gets to that point it'll go to zero because it's being covered. So now we're just going to scroll back through, we'll find the place when this guy's face actually comes back out, right there, 
So set a keyframe for 0%, set another keyframe for 100%. Now what we can see is it's actually over here because that's where it was at the last keyframe. So if we select the mask, then we can control it. And if we want to, we can actually change the um, scaling of this ellipse. We don't need to do that. So we'll bring it to about where his face is. And now what we're going to do is just scroll through, find about where good place is for his face. And now we're just going to track backwards. So what we can see is this ellipse isn't tracking his face properly. So we'll just hit stop. We're just going to zoom into here. And we're just going to delete all of these keyframes that it made before it actually sort of goes off of his face. So it really didn't do a very good job at all. So all we've got is from here. So now we're just going to go from here and track backwards one frame, check that it's okay. And it's not, you can see that it hasn't tracked his face. So we'll move it slightly over, track backwards one frame. It's looking pretty good. Now we'll just track backwards. And we can see that it's tracking his face well again. So that's what the track backwards one frame is really handy for, or forwards one frame. It's just to check that it's going well, and once it's started to track the face, then you know that you can use that. So now we can see is it's gone about there and then it's come on so it stopped moving after here so we'll just zoom in a bit we'll delete oh, we'll just select those keyframes and delete them hit the left arrow key and we're just going to set move it over here and move backwards one more frame and just move it slightly across a bit more so if we just zoom back out now we're going to go to the spot where if we just go up to here and we just hit, um, sorry, I didn't actually teach you about this. So this is go to previous keyframe, go to um, the next keyframe, and then we've also got add or remove a keyframe. So we'll just go forwards, and then we'll hit go to previous keyframe. So now we'll know that that was the last keyframe, which was the middle one. So now we'll track forwards. Then we're just going to hit stop right about now. And we'll just move that slightly a bit over. Set the opacity to 100% here. Go to forwards one. Set it to zero. So now what I'm just going to quickly show you is how you can actually move this mask onto a different effect. So if we search up a Gaussian blur, so most effects do, most video effects do actually have the option to use masks, but a Gaussian blur is a good one if you want a different type of blur. So if we select the mask, hit Command C, click on the Gaussian blur and hit Command V, so that's just for copying and pasting, or you can use Control C and Control V if you're on Windows. We'll toggle this effect off, the, the mosaic effect off. And we're just going to scroll down. And the Gaussian isn't working yet because we need to bring up the blurriness. Now I can, you can see, bring that up, and now his face is well blurred. So now that's got the same properties as the mask, and it looks just as good. So now if you want to leave now, that's fine. I'm, all I'm going to be doing is just walking through how to track bit more just because I know some people like having multiple explanations that is work better if they've had a couple of times but if you've got what you need and you've learned how to do it that's great I hope to see you in the next tutorial but if you want to just watch a couple more explanations I'll just be tracking backwards from here um, so you can stay in so I'm just going to go to the next keyframe from here and so we're just going to hide this mosaic effect now we're going to look into the Gaussian blur so we've got it from the first keyframe then we're just going to track backwards once again. It's tracking really well. Now we'll just wait for it to get near the end. So now as it's getting towards the end, I'm just going to wait and hit stop probably about now. As you can see, the ellipse has actually moved up a bit. So just zoom into these keyframes. And what I'm doing, I'm actually on a Mac laptop. So I'm just using the touchpad just to scroll. However, if you use Alt and use your scroll key if you've got a mouse, that also works, I believe, or you can just use this to um, zoom in. So I'm just going to go back. We can see the ellipse has jumped. So we're just going to delete all those keyframes before that. Go backwards one frame using the left arrow key. And we're just going to select the mask. Just going to zoom in. And again, I'm just uh, zooming in through my touchpad. Scroll across here. And we'll just bring it to about his face. Go back one more. And that's good. We'll set the opacity at here to 100%. Go backwards one keyframe, one frame, sorry, not keyframe. Go to 0%. And 
And now if we just play this back, I'll just fit it from here. If we just hit the space bar, we can watch this. And we can see his face is being blurred really well, and it goes off behind the statue, comes back on really well, and that was super quick. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.